Hello and welcome to Spinster's Library. I'm Claudia and this is my wrap up for December. But before we get into the wrap up, I would just briefly like to plug an announcement video I did last week and that is for my very own giveaway. Yeah, I'm running a book giveaway with a bit of a twist. So if you're interested in entering, go and check out the link up here and also of course in the description box for that video. Um, it also contains the announcement of a live Q&A, so if you have any questions for me, you can put them in the comments to that video as well. I hope you all enter the giveaway. I've had about 20 entries so far, and I think it's going to be really fun to run that. And now, for the usual wrap-up, as always, I will start with uh, shout-outs to three small booktubers that I have enjoyed particularly in that month. And usually I pick channels with a subscriber count of under 500, but there are some channels that I've really wanted to plug but who don't have their subscriber count public. So in this last wrap-up of the year, I decided to um, give shout-outs to these channels as well. Today, two of the three shout-outs are to channels that do keep their subscriber count hidden. Go and check them all out either way. The first shout-out goes to Corners of a Bookshelf. This channel is run by Nina and her videos, especially her vlogs, are just gorgeously shot and edited. She does reviews and discussions but she's really upped her vlogging game lately and I've just been enjoying watching those videos set somewhere nice and sunny, I believe Florida. Nina is a very artistic person and occasionally uploads art-related videos as well as her book-related videos. For example, she took part in Inktober last year. Cats! If you can hear scurrying noises, it's the cats having a good old fight on the floor. My second shout out is for One Book, One Review, which is run by Wiebke, a fellow German booktuber. Her videos are short and sweet and to the point, especially her reviews, which are incredibly well crafted, informative and thoughtful. Um, as well as those reviews, she also does some fantastically original wrap-up videos like her Letters to the Month, in which she wraps up her sort of personal month. Uh, in a letter to that month. I've been following her reading journey through the Terry Pratchett uh, Discworld series in particular because I've got some of those books on my TBR as well. And finally I want to recommend Turning Pages 52, run by the hilarious and talented Christine all the way over in Australia. She has an incredible eye for filmmaking and is also one of the funniest booktubers that I subscribe to. Her video output is not huge in terms of um, volume and regularity but I always enjoy her blogs and discussion videos in particular. She does a stellar job at editing too and really puts a lot of effort and thought into her videos making them extra entertaining. This was it for the shout outs, now for the books. I read five books in December with an average rating of 3.8 stars. So I really finished the year strong with some books I really, really liked. And very unusually for me, four of those five books are from the same book series. Now I don't remember the last time that I just binge read a series like that, but it certainly did the trick of getting me out of uh, that November reading slump that everyone seemed to had and that hit me quite hard. The first book in that series and the first book I read in December was Medicus by Ruth Downey. Now I blame this entirely on Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventures, uh, which is a booktube channel linked in the description box as well. She recommended this book to me when I asked for specific recommendations for historical crime fiction in a previous video that I did. But she also talked about this book in one of her videos about books set in Roman Britain. And again, I will link that video in the description box. In that video, she described it as a story about a Roman army doctor solving crime in the English town of Chester in the early second century. And I found the setting and concept so intriguing that I picked up the audiobook first thing in December the audiobook, by the way, is read by the fantastic Simon Vance, who's an audiobook narrator I also only recently discovered. The main character and detective in the story is a divorced army doctor called Gaius Petraeus Russo, who has just arrived in the Roman settlement of Dever, which is modern-day Chester. 
He is not too fond of Britain. He dislikes the food, the drink, and especially the locals. Right at the beginning of the book, the body of a young woman shows up in the hospital that he works at, and he gets unwillingly thrown into a murder investigation. The weird thing about this book is that, as a crime novel, it's not particularly original or um, unique. So there's murdered prostitutes, and we have the grumpy and unwilling investigator who's clashing with the official police forces. Uh, of course, there's some twists and turns, especially in the last third of the book, and there's a hint of a romance plot. And all of these are fairly standard of the genre. The writing itself, while enjoyable, doesn't stand out particularly, and there is a heavy use of cliches and tropes. There's humour as well, but it's definitely more of the silent chuckle than the laugh out loud variety. But the setting is what really made this a pleasure to read. I could read about Roman Chester all day long, and in fact did. The author acknowledges that very little is actually known about uh, everyday life in Roman Britain, but she really has done her best researching the little that there is and then combining it with research into other places and time periods to create a very believable and well-rounded and immersive picture of this time and place. I did have some issues with aspects of the book, especially with the character of Tiller, who's a, a mysterious British slave whom Rousseau buys from a dodgy trader, and then he tries to fix her broken arm throughout most of the book. She felt a bit underdeveloped and just not quite right. Uh, she certainly comes into her own in subsequent books of the series, but in this one I just wasn't convinced by her. When I finished the audiobook, I realised that this was the most fun that I've had while reading in a long time. Despite the negative aspects and the less than original plot of the story, I enjoyed it immensely, so I gave it four stars and immediately got my Kindle out and bought the second, third and fourth novel in the series. So the next three books are all built up on the previous one, so I can't really give too much away in terms of the plot. Um, so I'll try and discuss these three within one segment of the video. Uh, after I bought the three of them on Kindle, about five minutes after finishing the first one, I moved on to the second one straight away. And this one's titled Terra Incognita. By the way, I never learned Latin, so I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing these names correctly at all. In this book, our main character, Russo, travels to the far north of the Roman occupied area of Britain right up to the border. And with him he takes Tiller, who is originally from that part of the country. While she deals with some issues concerning her tribe and some personal history, he is once again involved in a murder investigation. In this book, we learn a bit more about the politics of the Roman Empire at the time, especially about what was going on at the fringes, like right at the edges of the occupied territories. Minerva. Let's just wait for the cat to wander past. As I said, I found um, the native British tribe to be a much more interesting people to read about than the Roman occupiers, so I'm really glad that the book focuses more on the Britons and their everyday lives and rituals and traditions. Tiller becomes much more fleshed out in this book. The murder itself to be honest, is pretty forgettable. I couldn't tell you who did it or why, and I struggle to remember who the murder victim was. But honestly, that's not what drove the book for me. Again, I enjoyed this one a lot, and the enjoyment came entirely from the setting and world building. So I gave this one four stars as well. Uh, so now we get to the third book of the series, which is titled Persona Non Grata. And in this book, we travel to Rousseau's home in Southern Gaul, that is modern-day France. He visits his family after receiving an urgent message to return, but when he gets there, he finds out that his brother and his own growing family didn't really want him there, that his stepmother and half-sisters are still as irritating as ever, and of course then, a murder takes place right on the family's premises. This book again explores a new setting, and I found that just as interesting as the north of Britain in the previous book. 
Southern Gaul is presented as a more established and more Roman part of the empire, with less division between the Romans and the natives. This also explores the beginnings of Christianity in a really interesting and entertaining way. And as a plus, the murder in this was actually interesting and intriguing and I found myself drawn into the whodunit aspect of the book for the first time in the series. Uh, this one was another four star read and I think is my favourite of the series so far. The fourth book takes us back to Britain, this time to the town of Verulamium. Russo is specifically sent there to investigate the disappearance of a tax collector and his brother and with them disappeared a big bag of tax money as well. When Russo arrives for the first time in the official capacity as an investigator, he notices straight away that there is something dodgy going on in this town. He doesn't know who he can trust and who might be involved with the disappearance of the brothers. As well as the crime plot, this book focuses on the personal relationship between Russo and Tilla. And I'm glad that those aspects were there because I found the crime plot confusing and boring and uninteresting. The author tries to tie in corruption and politics, but for some reason it just didn't work for me this time. Still a fun read and therefore gets three stars from me. Now after I binge read these four books, I thought I should probably take a break from this series, but I'm definitely going to continue it. I'm genuinely surprised by how much I enjoyed this. Crime fiction is not really my genre and neither is historical fiction, but mash them both together and you get a mix that just drew me in. I'm certainly going to continue the rest this year, hopefully. There are four more books that I have yet to explore, with the most recent one uh, just published last year. I can highly recommend this series if you're after a quick, easy and fun read and you find the setting of Roman Britain just as fascinating as I did. The fifth and last book I read in December was Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. I read this as part of my 1818 novel project in which I read and reviewed books from 1818 throughout last year. I have already uploaded my review video for this book, so if you are interested in the more detailed review, click uh, on the link up here or in the description box and that will take you to that video. In this video I'm only going to summarise the book and briefly give my opinion on it. So Northanger Abbey is the first written but last published of Jane Austen's novels and it follows 17 year old Catherine Morland who's very much average in looks, intellect and wealth but who really wants to be like one of the heroines of the gothic romance novels that she enjoys so much. She goes on a holiday to Bath with a family friend where she meets some new people and makes new friends. After that she gets invited to Northanger Abbey, uh, the country home of a brother and sister pair that she meets in Bath. The house is disappointingly modern and inviting and has no hidden gothic secrets like she was hoping for, but still she has a lot to be getting on with, with the usual experiences and turbulences of a Jane Austen novel. So there's false friends and social awkwardness and of course marriage proposals and mix-ups. This book read very differently to all of the other Jane Austen novels and that is entirely because of the way the narrator inserts herself into the story and comments on what's happening with the characters. I found this the funniest Jane Austen too, really enjoyed the humour of it and overall this was just a pleasant, light-hearted and fun read. I listened to this one on audiobook, narrated by the wonderful Juliet Stevenson who really got the satirical tone just right. Again, if you want more details about the book in a spoiler-free review, go check out the link in the description box to that specific review. That was it for the books. Interestingly enough, I didn't read a single book on paper last month because I read four books on Kindle and one audiobook. So making the thumbnail for this is going to be fun. I don't know how to use Microsoft Paint to put the little covers all there together in the thumbnail, but I'm going to learn. That means for my curated bookshelf project that I have zero books in paper to get rid of. Yay!
Now I just want to share my non-book favourite of the month and in a cold and rainy Welsh December it was this delicious loose leaf tea which my mum sent over from Germany and this is a vanilla flavoured rooibos and it's so good. <sighs> I've not been able to find a tea like this in the UK which is funny because you think of Britain as the land of tea and it is when it comes to black tea but when it comes to herbal teas not so much. So if you are in the UK tell me if you can find a, a vanilla flavoured rooibos or even a caramel flavoured rooibos or orange flavoured rooibos because I really really enjoy those flavoured rooibos teas but I've not been able to find them in any of the major supermarkets. Now if you are in Germany you can get this from Müller. Mm. I'm gonna go and make myself a cup of that now. Uh, also, my cats have joined me. Beetle, do you wanna say hello? He's, he's not often in my videos just because he's not as needy as Minerva. So while well, Minerva, who's here by the way, follows me around all day long, Beetle's much more like a normal cat and you know, likes to do his thing. Anyway, thank you for watching. Bye.